guest this morning, Carol Knuckles, CEO of Crystal Energy. Good morning, Carol, and thank you so much for joining us. Hello, Alex, and thank you very much for having me with you again on the show. Carl, you know, I'd like to kick off with, with tensions in Ukraine. What's the real risk, in your opinion, for the supply chain uh, and, of course, for the energy market as a consequence? Well, look, there are all sorts of scenarios that we are going uh, to uh, analyze in terms of their impact on the economies, on, on the energy markets. Uh, but let's assume the case of we have, let's say, a military action, whether it's a fully fledged inflation uh, invasion or just a, an incursion uh, whereby uh, Russia takes a small piece of uh, of the Ukraine, then that by itself will cause some repercussions, including sanctions on Russia. And the, here there is a big question, what would those sanctions entail? I mean, usually sanctions are not that effective on the short term, but there is a big doubt that they will target um, energy supplies. Otherwise, they will simply exacerbate the problems in Europe, the economic problem of inflation that Europe is facing, very high levels, record levels not seen for a decade. So if you end up cutting supplies, energy supplies to Europe, you're going to make that situation even worse. And I don't think there are immediate supplies available. There are, of course, options available, but not readily available for Europe to ease pressure on prices. So you don't want that scenario. That said, Alex, it's important to look at the implications of um, a potential um, and hopefully not really a conflict between Russia and Ukraine on the broader economy, because we forget also that Ukraine and Russia are important, uh, for example, uh, commodity producers other than energy. I'm thinking here about grain, for example, the Ukraine is one of the biggest exporters of corn, of wheat, also some products that you use for manufacturing um, like chips, uh, like neon or palladium, for example. Uh, so that can cause serious disruption to supply chains, which in turn will translate into higher prices and additional pressures on inflation. You, you know, I was wondering just a few seconds ago, we saw that wholesale prices in the US rose twice the expected. And I was wondering, uh, considering the crude oil prices so far um, stable above $90 per barrel, both benchmarks specifically brand above $94 per barrel. Um, you know, major companies like Goldman Sachs are targeting the $100 per barrel in the very, very near term. So I was wondering, do you think that uh, the crude oil and energy market as a whole is going to continue to be a major contributor in terms of inflationary pressures in the medium term, which means at least uh, by July 2022. I mean, definitely, when we talk about inflation, it's not just oil, I would also add to it definitely gas, because gas prices, particularly in Europe, have increased much faster than what we saw in crude markets. But if you look at uh, what is causing, what has been driving inflation, energy has played a major role. So if oil prices or gas prices or even any other source of energy prices continue their relentless march upwards, then definitely we're going to see uh, a greater inflationary pressure, and that would translate into perhaps more aggressive policies or reaction from central bank, whether in Europe with the ECB or in the US with the Federal Reserve. And that by itself raises many alarming bells because some people are worried about potential detrimental effect on economic growth. So if the central banks of these regions press too hard, the break too hard, and for example, introduce a much faster and higher interest rates than previously envisaged, then they risk uh, putting the brake on economic growth and that by itself has repercussions on oil markets with downward pressure on on demand and therefore on prices so it's it's much more complicated than saying that the prices are where they are today but remember that what we have today is a tight market definitely for oil but add to the the geopolitical risk premium so if geopolitical situation improves and there are the tension on the ukraine border in particular um, uh, gets diffused, then we might see uh, prices relaxing a little bit uh, from where the levels that we saw um, this week and last week in particular. So uh, something, one thing is clear that OPEC and OPEC Plus actually, to be honest, is a major player when it comes to supply. Um, and we're talking about a crude oil market. I was wondering, do you think that they will be more willing to, to supply the market from up production or prices at this level, at the current levels, uh, are, let's say, uh, positive for, for, for most of, of the producers? 
Well, where we are today is pretty a good uh, situation to be in for any oil producer, but particularly for OPEC and OPEC Plus in general, uh, because they are uh, really swimming in cash. I mean, these producers in terms of uh, the revenues that are being generated. Uh, but uh, here I hesitate to answer the question because I was thinking, OK, OPEC Plus, it includes also Russia. So this takes me again to the Russian problem uh, with Ukraine, that if there are any actions that could curtail uh, Russian supplies and Russia is among the top three largest producers in the world, then that, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not quite sure how will OPEC react. Of course, they will be, they will have a strong incentive to compensate. And the question is, who is going to compensate? But if the situation is as it is at the moment, and we're still looking for answers in terms of how that geopolitical situation is going to evolve, then I'm not quite sure OPEC has a very solid ground to deviate from the current strategy that's pursuing. Bearing in mind that this tightness in the market, if we leave geopolitical uh, pressure aside, was expected for this time of the year, but it is expected to um, to be toned down as we go further down the, uh, the route in this year, with additional supplies coming from the U.S. I mean, U.S. shale, don't forget, a few years ago, only last year even, many people wrote off shale in the U.S., and people are saying that now it's coming back stronger. Even 2023, we're going to see record levels reach. So I don't see... Again, if we leave geopolitical pressure aside, I don't see um, significant um, incentive for OPEC to deviate from where it is today, especially that some members are already struggling to meet their production commitments. Final take, very briefly, how is the shale oil um, increase in production consistent with, with the Biden's green agenda? Well, there you have lots of contradictions, right? Because the green agenda is something more for the longer term. But President Biden overlooked the impact of higher prices on the electorate. And every single president in the US has been focused on what the consumers pay at the petrol station when they go to fill their cars or their truck. And we know about the love affair of the American people with their car. So it's a pretty sensitive issue. And that's why, I mean, President Biden wanted to pursue seriously its um, climate agenda. And I see lots of lag there in in terms of delivery, they wouldn't have pushed for uh, lower prices at the pump. But because they know it's now the current problem that we are facing, the immediate pressure that people are facing at a time where there are inflationary pressure, therefore, maybe the climate agenda can be delayed a little bit further, but we focus on bringing or controlling the rise in prices so that the electorate don't get too upset. Thank you very much. Great to catch up with you. Carol Knuckles, CEO, Crystal Energy. Have a great evening over there. Thank you very much, Alex. Take care.